Everybody, welcome to the debut episode of Three Sides of the Coin. This is a KISS podcast where we get to geek out on KISS. And uh, uh, we've got three co-hosts. I'm one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandvold from michaelbrandvold.com. I'm joined, I'm not sure what side he is on for me here, but Mitch LaFon who is also my co-host on Dropping the Needle, who is with puregrainaudio.com. And on the other side of Mitch, or maybe he's in the middle, I don't know where he's going to end up. (laughs) This is a nasty (laughs) three-way being built here. (laughs) Tommy Summers. And uh, let's let's just do a quick roundtable and introduce ourselves to, to our listeners as to who we are and why the hell we even should be talking about KISS. So, Tommy, why don't you go first? All right. Well, um, I've been a fan since 75, so I was in the fifth grade at the time, and I followed the band pretty much up to this present day, and and memorabilia for, what, 15 years or so? That's how I met Mike. And um, I don't know. You know, I guess that uh, I probably have the outsider's perspective because I'm not in the music business like the two of you are, so we'll see. But you did spend many years selling tapes. Yes, as well as shirts and posters, anything I could get my hands on, entire collections, whatever the case might be. So I met an awful lot of fans. Yeah, so you kind of did this, at least in the Midwest, you did the circuit of the record shows and stuff like that. So you met a lot of fans doing that. Absolutely. Um, Mitch, I don't even know if we even have to ask, why are you a KISS fan? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's right. I I live the KISS experience 24-7 every day, you know. I started off uh, years ago, back somewhere around 77, 78, being a KISS fan. I picked up my brother's albums and thought, wow, this is much better than the, Al- the ABBA albums my mom had let out, left out. And I interviewed Gene when I was 11 years old in 1980. You can actually find that interview or the audio of it on YouTube. And, you know, I saw Eric Carr's first show back at the Palladium in New York, and I've been hooked in ever since. I mean... Be it uh, with Ace, without Ace, with Vinny, without Vinny, reunion tours, all this. Been there, done that, put out an Ace Fraley tribute album back in 96. I recorded, you know, we had Eric Singer in the studio recording with us. We brought in Bruce, got to meet them, hung out with them. It's just been, you know, 35, 40 years of nothing but kiss for me. I should probably hang up right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Please, this isn't a case of we're not worthy. He he is a, a Kiss fanboy to the extreme. We were yeah. we were yeah. joking that we should do this podcast in makeup and come up with our own characters. And I said, Mitch would be the fanboy. I'm not sure what. <laughs> may, maybe his makeup would be a dollar sign. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody should paint themselves like. I don't want to be Mr. Fanboy. No, but listen. There you go. It's been a long time, but there was a period where, where I sort of dropped off a kiss. You know, after uh, after analyzed, I sort of went, eh. but then uh, I came back once Crazy Nights came out. I bought Asylum. I bought Analyzed out of respect, but I wasn't by heart in those three, four years. You know, they they I had seen better days, but uh, other than that, I've been tried and true for way too long. And and my my history is Kiss fan since '76 when I got my first album, which is Rock and Roll Over. And basically, I don't know if it was just before, or just after that, is I saw him on the Paul Lind Halloween special, and that was just like a jaw dropping moment. And still, in my opinion, the best TV appearance they have ever done. Um, but in '95, I launched a little website called Kiss Otaku, which was the fifth website ever on the internet devoted to Kiss. Best one. And too. Uh, thank you. It uh, led to me getting a phone call from Gene Simmons in '98, asking me if I basically wanted to come build the official Kiss website, which I said yes. So got a new job, moved to California, kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies. Packed it up, moved to California, and uh, launched KissOnline.com and ran that from 98 until mid-2005. So I was there through um, Psycho Circus, Farewell Tour, um, 
all of these other incarnations of tours with and without original members all the way through, uh, like I said, 2005. So um, I think it's pretty safe to say we're, we're all KISS fans. But one of the things we wanted to do with this podcast was this isn't going to be a KISS-ass podcast. It's not on a, my end, on my end, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be Anybody wants to send <laughs> Mitch free Kiss product to review? He's accepting samples. Um, you know what? We we just wanted to make sure that we we were honest, and we you know this is just, literally this is just three guys' opinions. That's it. It's three Kiss fans and our opinions, and it's I'm sure it's going to be very different on some topics. Um, but we're not doing this to just kiss the butt of the band and praise them to all glory and to all end you know i think we all love the band and we always will love the band but uh, at least for me over the years i've come to almost love them more by being honest about the stuff i don't love about them and right. realize yeah. and realizing i don't have to love every single thing they do so you know that's kind of the basis of this you know the topics are not going to be we're not going to just sit here and go okay Let's talk about Destroyer today, and let's talk about Love Gun next week. Um, to me, at least, I feel like those are kind of boring. That's easy. You know, we're going we're gonna to kind of pick some interesting topics, and we were actually just uh, riffing on before we hit the record button about the Kiss Cruise, and I'm like, shut up. Let's stop talking about that. That's <laughs> going to be a great topic for an upcoming yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so this first episode, we kind of felt like, Let's talk about something current, um, which would be Kiss Books, official Kiss autobiography. So Peter yes. Chris just released his book. Ace Fraley released his, what, about a year ago, six yeah, months ago. Yeah. Um, Gene has had a couple books out for many years <laughs> here. Um, and Paul has just announced he's going to be finally doing a book. Uh, I'm right. not sure when it's coming. I'm assuming some point next year. But, um, you know, I felt like it would be kind of an interesting topic to just talk about the books. You know, what did you think about the books? Were they good? Were they bad? What was missing? You know, were they idiots? What, whatever your feelings were. So, you know, Mitch, tell us. My feelings on the books. Well, listen. First of all, I, I put no faith in the books that Gene Simmons wrote. I read them, and I thought they were nice sort of PR marketing bits. I didn't think they were very in-depth or very interesting in the sense of revealing any mysteries. It was, it was uh, you know, it's just a promotion exercise. Ace's book, again, uh, it was sort of like, woe is me, but without giving us a whole story. And plus... I didn't have any faith that it would be a story worth reading just because of all his, you know, substance abuse problems. I figured, how is this guy going to write a book based on memories that he probably doesn't have? And then the one that I really drove me crazy was Peter's. Peter's book, his whole book can be summed up as this. I did something wrong, but it's Gene and Paul's fault. That's his whole book. And he repeats it page after page after page after page. I did something bad, but it's Gene that made me do it because they treated me bad. Oh, I'm not. You know what? Uh, you, you, uh, I think you're exactly right about that. I mean, his book, he comes off as as very disgruntled, very pissy, very upset, pointing the finger at everybody else. But I also felt like, whether that's right or wrong, I at least felt like he was speaking his honest feelings. And, right. he, was, and he said a lot of stuff that had me going holy crap is that true is it not true it, i mean jaw dropping stuff right. and 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 his, and and his book to me um is 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 the book that every kiss fan always says they want to read they want that dirty laundry they want to know the the, the shit that went on behind the scenes but it's also the book that when they read it they're going oh that's terrible how can he say that that's not right. true. That's well, a see, lie. And that's, and that's exactly the point. And that, part of the problem with some of the people that, that I've 
encountered over my years is that they still think that the that Kiss is like the monkeys, that they all live in the same house together and they're best friends and they hang out to you know together on weekends when they're not touring or recording. And and you're right when when Peter comes out or anyone comes out with a book like that, it's it's really kind of like people want it, but then when they have it, it's uh, yeah, they're I don't like, know if oh I really God, want to read know, that at the same you're, time. You're, you're 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 destroying the image of my ideal band. Well, your ideal band was never ideal to begin with so you know where where i i give i love peter's book it it, okay. it it was a little slow to start reading it it was tough to get through his just personal life and growing up but i'm that way with everybody's book it's like i don't want to hear about you as a young kid and i don't want to right. hear about your parents get right into you doing what what people know you for um right. but at least he like i said i felt like he was just being honest he was being his honest self whether that's right or wrong, there's, in the case of Kiss, four sides to every story. Right. You know, we've got, right. we've, we've pretty much always heard Gene and Paul's side of the story. That's all you ever get. And I think everybody knows that's their side of the story. Ace's book, I felt like it could have had something great to it, but whether it's because he couldn't remember it or he just didn't care, I felt like it was a huge letdown. It was just it like was. it's like Ace, you know, because he, you know, he's writing about the Psycho Circus and he's writing about uh, the farewell tour and stuff like that, and 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 I was working with the band at that point in time. It's like, why aren't you talking about all of this stuff that was going on? Stuff that Peter brought up, you know. Peter talked. I think Ace Peter, doesn't know. I think well, he doesn't know what people actually want. I don't know if he. Yeah. I don't know if it's because he doesn't know. He doesn't remember. Or he well, I think I, I, don't know, I, I was really care. disappointed with the book. You know, I felt that it was um, a lot of random thoughts that weren't put together, and and it was missing huge holes, right. and it jumped oh, around huge, way too much, huge, huge and holes. it was almost like he jotted down his thoughts on a on a cocktail napkin and handed them to somebody and said, "Write this book." That's well, how it I, felt I, to I, me. I think, I'm I looking think that for a book like the Keith Richards book, Life. Um, that one's really interesting, whether you're a Stones fan or not. It, he really goes through chapter by chapter the whole history of the Rolling Stones. So when you're reading it, he talks about, okay, this is the record we were working on at this particular time, and this is what we were doing. So it's like you could go back and listen to the music and go, okay, I can really get a feel for what he meant when he was doing that. And Ace is just was kind of a mess. Yeah, his was a big, big mess. I mean, he had a ghostwriter that, that basically wrote it for him, and I'm sure he basically did pass stories off to him. And they were just... Yeah, the, the gaping holes. It's just like, you know, Ace, you were there that last week of the farewell tour where the tensions were so thick backstage. Right. When Peter had the tear on his, his makeup, you knew Poor that Peter. was there. Why didn't you talk about what that was about? You were at that show when Peter destroyed his kit and kicked it off the stage. You were there when after that show backstage, Ace and Peter got out of makeup and walked out, and that was it. It was done. There was no goodbyes. There was no farewells. There was no hugs. And then, Ace, you were there in Australia when Peter Chris was replaced by Eric Singer. You didn't talk right. about any of this. And and quite honestly, when he did talk about the farewell tour kicking off, he had the wrong city for the first day. You know, I think he said it started in Los Angeles or Long Beach or something like that when it started in Phoenix. Right. Yeah, I just like I said, I, I just feel like it, it's a uh, it was somewhat of an obligation, and he did it because he knew he had to, and it was just random thoughts, yeah. you know. And I agree with you. That's what I'd want is I want the details of the tour. I don't necessarily want, um, you know, all of the the bad stuff. I just want to hear about what did you think about this as it progressed or as it happened. So I find myself liking some of the other books better, like, um, you know, uh, Chris Lentz's book. I thought that was That's the one. amazing. That's the one. Amazing, yeah. book. amazing book. Chris' Chris book is, is, is awesome. And, and you're, you're right. I'm not necessarily sitting here looking for him to del or anybody to deliver the dirty laundry, but if you purposely ignore something that everybody knows happens, that yeah. that's a problem, you know. And, and when your other band members talk about it and you ignore it, you're sort of just like, where were you? What happened? You know, so it'll be kind of interesting to see where Paul goes. Does Paul take all of all three of these other books and finally sit down and say, OK, I'm going to address what 
all three of those sides said, and here's my take on it. Because again, I'm not I'm not saying Paul is going to be the right answer. You're gonna you basically end up with four books, four sides of the story, and you have to kind of formulate, match them up, and put the stories together and figure out on your own what you think really happened. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, we should explain, I guess, that Chris was the business manager of KISS back in the day and wrote a great book. But for Paul's, I don't think we're going to get anything worth reading, quite frankly. Uh, here's what I predict. He's going to say that Ace was a drunk and it didn't work out. He's going to take a shot at Vinny. He's going to say that Peter's book was full of shit. And then he's just going to give us some flowered, made-up sort of PR push about why KISS is great and has always been great. And I don't think it's going to make for an interesting read, quite you know, honestly. I, I, don't, I don't know if it'll even be that. I mean, my, my take is Paul... It'll first be of, vindictive. Paul, Paul is not the type of person that, that goes out and is purposely talking shit about people. You know, he, well, he, I, he, I mean, yes, he has done it. He's made stabs in interviews and right. backhanded comments, but he's not like... He's not like Gene where he just comes out and says this guy was a drug addict and messed up and screw him and blah, blah, blah. Paul, Paul definitely is the more gentleman of the band. Sure. Agreed. And, and he's also, yeah. I kind of feel like he's going to be more of taking the role of Kiss as a positive influence. And what has Kiss meant to people? And what has Kiss done for him? And how does it motivate it? You know, I'm not saying that sucks. I'm just saying... From what I've known about Paul and the, the times I've talked and worked with him, I kind of feel like that's where he's going. I don't think he's going to sit down and write the tell-all, dirty laundry, you're a fucking lying bastard book. Well, and no, I hope he doesn't. All. I hope he doesn't. I mean, that's not what I want. I, I'd like to see him. He seems of the four the, the most uh, logical one to be able to write something that gives you that history of the band. I don't care about the dirty laundry, but I want to know what it was like to be here, and then what is it like to be where you are now, and walk me through the steps of that career. And I think of the four, he's got the best shot, because Gene's, all that stuff is always going to be bullshit. It's all going to be a PR to hype something, to sell something, and it doesn't, I don't feel like you're ever going to get the truth from right. him. And you, and you know, if if Paul were to write a book that kind of tells all i wouldn't be interested in him writing about peter or ace telling all or Vinny. i want him to actually tell the true relationship with gene simmons yeah how, how, that, how, how, but, how gene does things to piss paul off how gene has done stuff and kiss that he hasn't liked you know talk about what was really going on behind the scenes in the 80s when gene right. went hollywood and went awol and talk about you know, a, a, after you put the makeup on and Gene was Tongue Magazine and all this other stuff. And what was that doing to Paul? You know, but I, that. but I don't think he's going to do it. But that is the dirt I would love to hear. But I do get a sense that he waited to go last on purpose. I think he wants to oh, get yeah. the last word in. And I think he wants to take, even if it's backhanded stabs at the other four or the other three and say, well, you know, Peter might have said this, but come on, who are you going to believe? And, and I think he went on last on purpose so that he gets his say. Oh no, I think I think you're I think you're right because he's going to be the last to do a promotional tour. He's going to be right. last to do all the interviews. He's the he's the one people are going to remember talking about Kiss. They're definitely not remembering Gene's book. People don't even remember what it was called. Ace's book was uh, nothing. Was Kiss and was it Kiss and Sell or no Kiss and? No, Kiss and Sell was the other no. one from Kiss and that, that Sell. Was Chris, Chris Lent. Chris Lent. Um, and then we had uh, Kiss, Kiss and Makeup or something called Sex Money Gene or whatever it was called. Hold, but hold, 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 just, hold, hold on, I'm gonna go grab it. Let off me my book just shelf. say something with Paul's though. Um, what I would like to read in it. Oh, he disappeared. <laughs> Mike, I mean, he, I bet he's going to get the book. Yes. I don't see him anymore. Please there continue, Mitch. I will wait for him to reconnect. We'll edit this part out. No, this is live. There you go. There you go. Kiss and make yeah. up. Kiss and make up. But what I was saying about Paul's, what I'd like to read is not so much the dirt about, you know, how much money was made and, and how much booze was taken. I'd like to read about some of his frustrations he had dealing, like you said, with Gene in the 80s when he ran off to do his movie stuff, with Gene and family jewels with maybe putting together a reunion tour, you know, throwing out uh, Bruce and Eric in 95 when yeah, 
they got along as guys, but money wise it was better to do the reunion but was that was there a frustration in that was there a frustration when the farewell tour came along i'd like to read some of his you know sort of inner thoughts about the different periods and the different things that happened and not so much well he's a draw i don't want to read that stuff but i do want to know we did something good and i got frustrated when gene decided that when we did the elder i was frustrated with bob when i like i, I want to know some of that stuff so it's not really dirt ish Right, but I no, want to know I, that it, not everything was. Hey, exactly. welcome I, to Candyland. I, I, I think if we're going to get any sort of tell-all, that would be the kind that will be out, good. That that will be coming from Paul, and which what you're right is going to be good. I think at the end of the day, Peter's book is going to stand as the the TMZ Dirty Laundry Kiss autobiography. Now, right, and, good or bad, uh, it doesn't doesn't matter. Again, I I feel like he felt like he told the truth. He told his side of the story. You can. You can think he's a crybaby for doing it. I'm just saying. I just feel like it was part of what was going on there. And he, you know, you know and he, said, he said a lot of stuff that fans have always felt like we've always knew was going on. You True. know, he he talked about stuff like you know I was there that last week of again of the farewell tour when the tensions were high and and I remember management calling me going, um, we don't know if the last seven shows are going to happen. Peter may not renew to do these last seven shows and then they finally said this show is the last show you better get out to this show because this is the last show that peter's doing well right. see and what i think is insane to me is is that whether they're in the reunion tour or when it was way back in the 70s when they got started i still don't understand why if there's four people in the band why they can't sit down in a room together and discuss something and make a decision it seems like the attorneys always seem to get in the way so it's always such an odd point to me when i read something like what you're talking about mike because it's like really you guys couldn't just at least meet backstage or during sound check and say okay this is where we're at it's just I don't know. I, I've never understood that about musicians. That they, you know, I understand that there are different types of people, and you can only get along with certain people for just so long. Or I get all that, but it still seems weird to me that they can't at least have a conversation. But you know, is is that because at some point in their career, money becomes the other member of the band, and they become super successful, and now everybody's worried about their portion, their take. You know, was it? Um, uh, who is it? Jeff Seuss, the guy who wrote um, Kiss Alive Forever? Right. Oh, Kurt, no, it's Kurt and Jeff. Kurt and Jeff, both of them. Right? Yeah. So he made a comment once that, you know, after all of his research and interviews, it was basically he determined it was like 1975 to 76 when Kiss changed dramatically. Right. Hmm. That's and when which... success hit. That's when things dramatically changed changed in the band and if you read peter's book he says the same thing that sort of when crew the original crew was replaced and new people came in and there's new management and new this and new that and lawyers that's when the business became big and real and before that it was four guys in the back of a van or a station wagon having fun talking to each other well, and I can see where things fall apart, and I also want to say that Kiss Alive Forever is also a really good book awesome. if you want yeah. touring history and, and information about the, the band touring. It's fantastic. But to your point, though, I, I still don't understand that after 20, 30 years, however long it's been, and they get back together to do the reunion tour, that they can't just come face-to-face -face and discuss things. That still seems insane to me no matter how much money is at stake you'd think they could say okay well tonight's the last night or or we're going to go through you know another two months of this or whatever it is it just seems like there's zero communication right but that's sort of how the music business is set up i mean once you reach a, or attain a level of fame it becomes my lawyer represents my interests my banker represents mm -hmm. my interests and so it just becomes this team of my my people will talk to you people and the artist ends up being completely removed from the picture and that's any band whether it's the Beatles or the Stones yeah. or Led Zeppelin or I, I mean you know that's the way it goes the, the one other book I want to throw out there is our uh, dear Bruce Kulik has often said that he was going to write a book he's going to write a book what do you think we'd get out of a Bruce book <laughs> do you want my honest opinion well uh, yeah. I, I, I like Bruce he's a nice I guy him. I've dealt with him Great many guy. times I don't think we're going to get a book that's going to say anything that could potentially upset anyone. 
True, but could we find something in there that would be a good story? I mean, again, maybe it doesn't have to be a dirt book. Maybe it can just be recalling the Carnival of Souls sessions sure, in sure. detail. No, that, recalling that, that, that could definitely happen, but I sort right, of right. feel like that would happen if Gene and Paul are okay with that story being told. Well, what right. would happen if Vinny wrote a book? Would it, would it all be about dressing up like a woman? <laughs> I, I think I think if... Vinny wrote a book. He would be sued so much that it would never see the light of day. <laughs> I just they think that, bl- whole, they, that whole period was a mistake. But I agree completely. Well, that, 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 that is definitely another topic for us is the whole, yes. Vinny, the, the whole Vinny thing. But, it, no, you know, if Bruce wrote a book that talked about the recording, well, you know, he sort of has done that. Have you seen what he's been doing on his website lately? Where yes. Where he goes into the great detail of Carnival Souls and Crazy Nights, song by and song. Revenge. And, and Revenge. And Revenge. Awesome stuff that he's been doing there. Really, really awesome. If anybody Absolutely. hasn't checked it out, go to Kulik.net and check out his, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's, it's insider a Insider report. Insider report of the recording, not just the recording, that era, because he talks right. about song by song, albums, or not albums, uh, equipment used. He talks about like the stage, the, costumes. The stage costumes and the, fo- the photography that goes on. So that's the type of stuff, if he tells it and expands on it and does it where he's not worried about upsetting Gene and Paul, I think right. it could be great. You see, I don't see how that could upset Gene and Paul. I mean, to say that I used uh, whatever guitar on whatever song on Revenge... That seems innocuous. I don't see Gene and Paul having any issues with that. And it's it was very fa- it's a fascinating read. Those three are fascinating reads. And if he could talk a little bit about his brother on Alive Two and on all that, and sort of tie the cool history in with his recording history, without saying this guy is a drunk, and I think we'd have a great book. I mean, to he, go he could, from well, I mean, he you know remember. He was there when when Mark St. John. So there's a right. whole there's a whole story that nobody really knows. What was going on with Mark St. John? Why what what was Bruce's feelings about all of that? I mean, yeah. he, but but again, it it's not stuff that in my mind would upset anybody, but it's stuff that maybe oh. Gene and Paul don't want that story told. Yeah, you never yeah, know I, what their reasoning is. Yeah, you know, though I would I don't know. You're perhaps right, but I would see it. I have a hard time believing that they don't mind a few anecdotes about recording an album because the stories have come out since then. I mean, for the longest time, we weren't allowed to know about Anton Fig. For the longest time, we weren't allowed to know that Jean Beauvoir played on something. And now that's out everywhere on Kiss Fact. Even Kiss Online talks about it once in a while. So I don't think there's anything Bruce could say that would upset the cart, you know? Oh, I'm sure there probably is. I mean, let you know, he was in that band for a right. long it time started, during yep. a very interesting time period. Mark St. John to Bruce Kulick through Paul's solo tour and what that meant was going on with, with who was their man, yeah. who was managing them at that time, Paul's psychiatrist. Right. But I think if you, you avoid know, money issues and contract issues, it's a, it's a, it gets by, and it would be an interesting read. No, I, it, it, it could be. I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what will come from it if he does. I would love to see him do it, but you know, again, only do it if you're going to tell us what something you feel, we don't some, know. Something we don't know. I'm not asking for the dirty laundry, but if all exactly. you're gonna, if all you're gonna do is write a book that kind of rewrites Gene and Paul's version of history in Bruce's voice. Sorry, but there's no interest in that. I agree. Right. But, so there's a potential. There's potential for a great book from Bruce. Who else should write a book in Kiss Nation? Well, you know, I mean, in all seriousness, I think Vinny could. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got, out, even outside of Kiss, I mean, the whole thing that went on with Vinnie Vincent Invasion and Slaughter getting kicked out of his own band and... You know, he could he could write an interesting book that, you know, if he's desperate for money, <laughs> do right, it. Let's, it'll be worse than Peter's. It'll be the whole world is wrong and I'm right. But, so, but you know I, what? I mean, I that, know. But that, that, that's going to come with these books. You've got right. to understand that, okay, that's this person's take on it. 
Well, and I like reading, you know, I like reading all kinds of different books, music books, just like you watch, you know, behind the music, even if you're not a fan of that particular band. But I personally would have zero interest in reading anything that Benny Benson had to say. And, and I'm I sure, just. I'm sure the one book that everybody would love to get would have been a Bill of Coin book. Right. Yes. Yes. That would have been fantastic. Even Doc McGee, but he's not going to do still, or say anything. You know, not not yeah. until he's out of the business and retired and doesn't then care he could write. that if he pisses somebody off. Yeah, because that would be sure. an interesting book because he could talk about Motley and you know, some of the other people. Oh, yeah. Bon Jovi, being arrested for importing cocaine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I personally like the the books about Kiss that are more of the business side of things. Absolutely. That, that's, that's always the side we never see. That's why Chris Lent's right. book Kiss and Sell was amazing because it took you into a world that very few people get to see, experience, or understand. Right. That doesn't exist yeah. for the normal fan. You know, and, well, and, 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 and uh, what I like best about it is it just talked about all those things that you had no clue about during that time period, like you were saying, where, you know, just like even the idea of putting up the, the Kiss Carnival or whatever it was outside of, you know, Madison Square Garden, things like that. I'm like, oh, I never heard any of that. That's why the business side books are always so more interesting because it's typically the truth laid out that this is what we were working on at the time rather than someone's vague memory of something or someone trying to take a stab at someone else. Chris wasn't, I don't think he was being negative towards anyone he was just telling the truth right and you know the um what was the casablanca book oh larry uh, Harris party, book. Uh, party every day yeah right yeah i mean there, there there's another one now it's not all about kiss it's all about casablanca records but again it's another look inside of the world that most of us don't see you know when mm -hmm. when i was when i was running kiss otaku and kiss online i was always more interested in getting interviews with people that were the behind the scenes, right. not in front of the camera. Meaning, let me go find the guy who was the engineer. Let me go find the tech. Let me go find the art director. Let me go find the copywriter. Talk to those people because they've actually got the interesting stories. And and what 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 was fun is if you did it in the right way and you got three or four people and interviewed them separately, they didn't realize it. But when you put their stories together, it completed a picture. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, then maybe speaking, Howard Marks should write one. Yes. Yeah. Or Bob Ezrin. But uh, just completing on Bob, on uh, Bruce Kulick, uh, I'd like to see his him write a chapter about his friendship with Eric Carr and that whole Eric Carr sort of dismissal at the end and going through the cancer. That I think that could be interesting without being dirty. Yeah. Yeah, because that was not good. A good, a very good friend of mine who lives in New York City actually was very close with Eric. I don't know if I've ever told you this stuff, but um, his roommate was dating Eric, and right. you know, he's he was just kind of he used to be a Kiss fan, isn't so much anymore, and was just kind of he built a friendship with Eric, and just some of the stuff that he's told me about just uh, didn't look, does not look make them look all that good. No, all the way down to the insurance and all kinds of different things like that. Well, yeah, I've I mean, heard. you know, I, I've, I, you know, and this is stuff that maybe Bruce could address. I mean, I heard that back when Paul did his first solo tour, Eric was not happy at all that Paul went out and did a solo tour and and didn't ha ask Eric to be the drummer. True. You yeah. know, now was was that the start that of things? I don't know, but but obviously Bruce would probably have more of an insight. Well, and I know that during Hot in the Shade tour, for the first, I think, half of it, Paul and Eric didn't speak. And this is, again, coming from my friend who knew him very, very well, that there was a definite tension. And I'm not sure what it was. I never heard. But that could have been the start of it. Yeah. And, and I think out of all the guys, Bruce is the only one who could sort of do justice to telling Eric's story. I don't think Gene did him any good. I don't no. think Paul is going to say anything. No. I think Bruce is the only one that has the affinity and the insight to give us something about Eric that we don't have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, if for no other reason, it was Bruce and Eric were the other side of the kiss puzzle. You know, as always, right. Gene and Paul and yep. Bruce and Eric were the two hired guys. So obviously right. they were going to probably bond much more. Right. And, and you know they, they they had a nice relationship, and and I think uh, that would be a story worth hearing. And I think again, I'll say it again. I think Bruce is the only one who could tell it. Yeah, you know, I I agree. You know, anything that Gene or Paul would tell at this point is going to immediately be seen as well. You're just spinning it to cover yourself, to 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 make yourself look good. 
And as and as we've read the other three books, Eric's been completely ignored, or I mean, or mentioned so little that you don't even think that he was part of the band. Right. Right. Which is you a know, to, major to, shame. To, to some extent, I mean, I can understand Peter not getting into it, but Ace, no, but Ace could have maybe said how he felt seeing somebody else in the makeup the first time, or or you know, gave a little insight of how he felt with that guy playing his, you know, singing Black Diamond, or. But there was just nothing. They ignored him. Ace, right. a, well, Ace, well, Ace, Ace, Ace ignored everybody. Ace, I mean, he, Ace is the bigger question. Why did Ace? I mean, Ace actually played with the guy. Right. And they were supposed to be the, great It was in, recorded with him. You know, it, it, right. how did he ignore it? Right. And and listen, I, I you know, let's hope Paul doesn't ignore him. But I have a sense that Paul is going to talk about him and Gene and they are Kiss and they've always been Kiss and everybody else are bit players. I just I just get a sense that it's not going to be... Well, this great Kiss family book that we're hoping for. I, I hope Paul doesn't ignore the '80s altogether. Basically, well, if he it, doesn't, it, it, could, it, could, it, could, it could be quickly glossed over in half a chapter, and, well, and that, be, that, that would be a shame if it does. Well, I yeah, think it'd be it's nice if each abandoned me. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it would, it would be nice if if each chapter was a year. You know, and this is what we did in 74. This is what, and then it covers everything. Because if you're a fan of the band, you're going to buy the book. Someone that is not a fan is not going to buy the book. So why not go through the whole history of the band and talk about 83, 84, 85, and so on? I almost wonder if maybe some of what Peter did um, with his book as far as giving us the dirt, it was to sell more copies. I mean, that, let's face it, that's what, because that's what everything they, they, every time I saw something on the media about it, they were leading with the, the dirt of the book, which which is what sells, you know, and, and with Motley Crue, you know, their book, The Dirt, was so incredibly successful that I'm surprised that you don't have more musicians that are coming out and using that template to sell books. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, I was talking to somebody else. I said, you know, of, of the Kiss books, Peter Chris's is the, the version of The Dirt for Kiss right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and, and again, like I said at the very beginning, that's what the fans say they want. They want the dirt of their band. Sometimes yeah. they don't like it once they get it, but Peter delivered the dirt. Let me ask you this question. Do you think Peter's book had so much dirt because he's convinced he's never going back to the band and Aces was sort of on the edge just because he thinks maybe there could be a reunion and I don't want to get on Gene and Paul's bad side? You know, I think that's overthinking and giving them too much credit for for planning that out i think peters was partially that's his personality he's right. you know that's who he is he's always been that person he does he says that in his book and you know i think he is just telling it like it is and he is probably tired of having other people say stuff about him and he's just like damn it i'm gonna say what i think now ace yeah. on the other hand i think you kind of hit the nail on the head i just think he didn't care and didn't remember. Yeah, I think it was just, just random thoughts, you know. Right. And I also think, too, don't you think in all fairness that whether they were in the band or not, it's harder for those guys or certain people to write books when you have some that are so incredibly good. Uh, I still I love Lydia Chris's book as well, you know. I mean, it doesn't tell a huge story, but it's... I see. I love the photos. I mean, so for me, that was worth yes. it to have that stuff. So you get different things from different books. But I just, I don't know. I, I think that that it's hard to come up against certain ones with a lot of depth to them. Yeah, you, you know, know what? I, I think it's worth. I think it's worth mentioning that Lydia's book is definitely worth getting for fans. You know, yeah. it's it's a yeah. large size book, and in my opinion, it it could easily rival, if not better, Kistory. Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. The, the 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 photos in there. I mean, Peter even P Peter even talked about that in his book real briefly. Talked about how he's not happy that Lydia did that. <laughs> you, know, you know, kissery aside, it, it would, would be nice actually to see another book by Gene or Paul or you know, or Kiss Inc. That was just a whole bunch of pictures. It doesn't even need words. Just a whole well, bunch it, of isn't, isn't that, like monster yeah i was gonna say come on mitch are you setting us up for a monster discussion here yeah yeah we're not the big monster four thousand dollar but with a lot of the black and whites and the small the sort of fifth right <laughs> that's yeah, coming that, out that's next what year we need. i think we i think we've got another topic just on monster the book uh, i haven't uh, even seen it have you have you guys seen it 
Because I haven't seen no. it. No. Uh, online, okay. of course, but online. not live. I've okay. never seen yeah. it live. I mean, for all I know, there's only been three copies printed to the three people who've ordered it, if that's yeah, what it was. No one's, yeah, because no one's talking about it anymore. That disappeared pretty fast. Yeah, that, I, and I'm, I kind of sense they're probably happy because the, yeah. the discussions I, online were not anywhere near positive on that book. Well, how, how can you expect it to be? You know, really? $4,000 for a book that's four feet tall? I mean, it's just like, that's a PR stunt. It's not a real book. Right, right. And I don't think it went off well. No, no. So, so you know, I think... And listen, I think we the should... fan base is not, you know... It's not a millionaire fan base. I mean, there's a lot of blue-collar guys that love Kiss, and nobody can afford... Well, listen, if you've got $4,000, are you buying a book or are you going on the Kiss Cruise? Well, maybe uh, they Chris... should charge $5,000 for the Kiss Cruise and give everybody a copy of the book to get rid of all of them. Yeah. Oh, no, they'd never give it away. No, they add an extra grand to the cost. But the the Kiss Cruise sells out anyway. That's true. That's yeah. yeah. So, you know, let let let's wrap this up. You know, I think we did a, a a cool first discussion here on on Kiss books for our first podcast. Um, let's see if we can keep this weekly, biweekly. I don't know. You know, whatever we feel like bullshitting on Kiss stuff. But more importantly. Wherever you guys are watching, hearing, reading about this, please leave us comments. And I'm sure there's going to be some great and interesting comments. Yeah. <laughs> tell, oh, us we're, sure. tell us we're full of shit. Tell us we're idiots. I don't care. Tell, I, leave Speak comments. Speak your I mean, mind, man. Yeah, it's, the, it's mind. the only way we can you know, improve things, change things, topic ideas. You know, yeah, topic it, idea is a good one because we can talk kids all day long. Yeah, I mean, if we've got, tell us that, we, you know, if we got to fire Mitch, let us know. We'll fire Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say one thing, though, okay? Just so everyone knows, we're all fans, all oh, right? Ser so seriously. take this with a grain of salt. Like Mike said at the beginning, this is just three sides of the coin, and we're not trying to offend anybody. We're just talking. Yeah, I mean, we are fans. Yeah. Look over my shoulder. I've got a couple kiss prints right behind me. Um, this photocopied? No, no, they're actual uh, <laughs> reels uh, uh, signed by the photographer. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, um, no, we are real fans. I love the band. I, don't I got my it. Animalize shirt. See? There you go. Oh, God, you get... guys, I don't have anything with me here today. Hmm. <laughs> oh, well, then we yeah. know who needs to be fired. Well, your name's Tommy, like the guitarist now. So, Well, that's why I could wear the makeup. You're the spaceman. You're the space man. <laughs> All I got to do is work on my uh, on my guitar skills, and I could show up just in case yeah, you know, he so, doesn't make so it. So, like, like Tommy said, don't think we're not fans. I mean, yeah. we definitely are. I mean, I've got racks. I've not racks. I've got boxes and boxes full of Kiss merchandise and records and everything else. And well, and we became friends because of this. Because I mean, this, of it, I, and I've known you since what eighty eight. And that's probably how Mitch and I. Became friends too was because of Kiss. So yeah, you know, d yeah, you know, all we're doing is we're just speaking our opinions, and I know, and I think you guys would agree, our opinions don't represent every fan. Mm -hmm. It's just three opinions. Oh, yeah, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch represents every <laughs> fanboy that's out there. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that is correct. You want to see my gene again? Yes. Be, <laughs> as, as soon as we hang up here, Mitch is hopping in the car and going to Walmart to see if there's a new Kiss blanket that came out. No, Kiss jammies. Kiss jammies? <laughs> yeah. Or is it a, a Snuggie? Snuggie. Or uh, whatever they are, yeah. Mitch, oh, no. Did we upset Mitch? He's gone. Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. We made the Kiss fan cry. <laughs> Come back, Mitch. It's okay. Mitch. Mitch. All right. Well, let me let me wrap this up. So please leave us comments, and we definitely are going to keep this an ongoing thing and all sorts of interesting topics. So, again, this is Three Sides of the Coin. I'm Michael Brandvold. We've got Tommy Summers, and he's off upset at <laughs> us now because we picked on him. His, oh, here his he comes. Mitch, Mitch Lafon. It, it died on me. Uh huh. Blame it. We we think. Did you spill it? He spilled the Kiss Kool Aid on his monitor. <laughs> no. <laughs> see, even now I can't see myself. I'm frozen. Hello. Well, we, we yeah, can, you're we just. Can, we can, we can all I see you. is a spinning circle. We can hear you. There oh, you ah, are. Oh. There he is. 
I thought we. Well, I'm not even. I, I thought, see you two, but I don't see me. I oh thought, well, listen. I, I, I thought, guess I guess my Skype has had enough. I thought we made you cry, Mitch. Yeah, I, I am. Worried. I am weeping. But can you see me at all? Uh, yeah, we can see you. But we we we're all done. We've already wrapped up, and we're ready to sign off now. Got a fro I'm frozen. Oh well, listen. I, I guess we can edit that say, part. Say, say goodbye, gently. Mitch. Say goodbye. Good night. No, I can't see me. <laughs> Good night, all. Thanks, everyone. Hey, that was fun. Bye. Three sides of the coin. Cheers.